Welcome to Common Unity. I'm Jason Fox. And I'm Dr. Gabriel Lewis. And we are bringing the community together with a common unity. Who did we initially meet? Was it through Kirk or was it through B&I? Or? No, it was actually through um, Philip Lottering. Was it? Yeah, at Tomata. Oh, was it that night? Yeah, that ah. night that we you were dressed as... Um, the Joker. Joker. Yeah, Harley and Quinn I was and like, Joker. Oh yeah, okay. This this character is cool. Like, okay, um, and I and I liked your confidence of like, you know, I don't, no care in the world. I'm just gonna dye my hair green and paint <laughs> my face white and wear a, a purple suit and jump in. And yep. um, and it was actually cool. I was like, oh yeah, I like this character. And then yeah, after that, it was through um, through Kirk and then B and I. Well, let's just use that as an intro. So um, sure. today we've just found out where I met this guy and uh, welcome Nathan Gill to the podcast. Cheers, mate. Welcome, welcome. It's a pleasure to have you. Nathan actually reached out to me probably only a few episodes in and yeah. wanted to hit us with some insights on on his industry. His industry is real estate. So we'll get to how he got there. But um, I thought what a great way to start the year with so much uncertainty, people are worrying about their house prices, all the rest. So we'll get to that. That's a cliffhanger. Listen until the end. But uh, <laughs> Nathan, where were you born, mate? Let's start from there. Uh, well, I actually was born in India, mate. Yeah. Okay. And um, you know, it's been a it's been a really good journey um, coming from a third world country, and you know, understanding how the rest of the world works, and um, like you know, I mean, in India there are two different extremes, um, and then like you know, coming from there to actually see the whole Western world. Um, yeah, it was um, it was definitely a huge sort of change and challenge at the same time. But I've always been up for it. Sure. Um, growing up, it was like in India, yeah, you're highly influenced by US culture mm. more so as compared to any other country. So you know, growing up listening to Fifty Cent and like you know all these um, yeah. rappers and understanding their swag and all of that to to lead into. Um, like, oh, I actually would like to go overseas and, um, you know, that's where I'd see my future. So that's how it all sort of came about. I guess growing up over there, the opportunity to move overseas seems like a far-fetched thought, does it? Or it's Some way, shape or form, um, but it also depends on um, what sort of city that you are in. So the city that I'm from, Chandigarh, um, that's one of the last cities that British has actually left. So the whole city has been designed and um and sort of engineered in a way to suit modern lifestyle okay um it's like full of gardens full of roundabouts um sort of similar to um auckland yeah sure um but you know like (laughs) um over there like majority of the people are actually overseas so for me to actually think that, okay, look, I would actually like to go overseas as well. It was like, yeah, that can be done yeah, sure. um, compared to if I was somewhere else. Yeah. 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 So that's mm. a sort of, there's a bit of money in that area, obviously. Yeah. It's yeah. not third worldish. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it is not. Um, but, but at the same time, a lot of people in Chandigarh are um, sort of like, you know, they do the blue collar job, mm. um, but you know, then then you also have got some massive businesses up there as well. Uh, people that have actually have that entrepreneurial mindset and have gone and pushed limits. So yeah, sure. yeah it was it was actually really good growing up there. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh, very interesting. And we, uh, we right through school, university over there, or we, what part did you end up in NZ? Yes. Yeah, so um, it's an interesting story. Um, so growing up, like yes, yeah, schooling there course university there um and um i finished my bachelor's in commerce there and i was just like okay i finished my bachelor's now and uh <clears throat> i'm actually gonna do masters in business now yeah, okay cleared my papers for masters um to get into the university that i'm that i wanted to go to and um and after that um got my ticket to get in and then the university sent a um a pace like a uh, 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 um, um, sort of um what you actually the fee structure to dad and um dad was like you know it's slightly over than um what you actually pay to get in and i was like why is that i was actually quite curious to see why do you have to pay extra amount and um it was more because over there to actually get the seat that you after you have to pay extra money they call it like almost a bribe. So, yeah, sure, you buy yourself in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can go on the waiting list, but there's this many people in front of you, so. 
Yeah. It was literally shocking to me, mate. I was like, why do you have to pay that money, you know? And um, and that made me really question everything. And I was like, okay, do I see myself living in this country? Do I, like, would I have to go through this for the rest of my life, my kids and all of that? So that made me really go like, okay, um, is there anywhere else that I can see myself? And so I had the option of um, um, coming to um, Australia, yep. um, US, Canada, or New Zealand. And how'd you end up here? What? What? I mean, they're all amazing countries. Yeah. As far as opportunity and so forth, um, yeah. little old New Zealand, probably <laughs> probably a little bit less for opportunity based off population. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, the reason I picked New Zealand was. Um, Got family in Canada, got sure. family in States, got family in Australia. And I was like, I just would like to go somewhere <laughs> where there's no one. And um, I can do my own thing. I don't have to answer to anyone and just be me, you know. Yeah, okay. um, and, and that literally was the was the thing. I was like, okay, I'll, let's, go to, let's go to New Zealand. And um, I applied at a few um, uh, universities and politics here and um, uh, Wairiki Institute of Technology um, back in the days that, that was called now it's Toei Ho Mai. Um, so then, yeah, they were like, yeah, we invite you to actually come over here and do a level seven course and um, see how you go. And yeah. that was the ticket. I was like, okay, let's let's make it happen. And you went through and did the business degree still? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I did that. Um, completed that there um, in Rotorua and, um, and then um, got a manager's job to um, manage a fruit and vegetable shop and at Owen's place. Um, so literally that was the beginning, like all the character building jobs, you know, as you do, um, yep. did it all, mate, like, you know, went through trade staff, like all, all sorts of jobs, but it was more like just understanding Kiwi culture, understanding the people, mm. um, understanding, you know, what it takes to actually survive, but also thrive in this country. So yeah. it was a really good eye opener t- for me to go through all of that. Because I haven't done it, I've always been intrigued, you know, you hear about the the Mexicans and stuff that yep. might come into America or whatever, yeah. and the the cult, kind of immigrant culture, yep. they're either going to have absolutely nothing or they're going to work their ass off to get successful. Yeah, And I guess when you come into a country where perhaps it's not your first language and stuff, you really do study the people rather than just take them for granted? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, fortunately, I don't have to um, jump off huge, huge fences and um, go on a dodgy boat and... Um, cross oceans to get here which was made for a great story though <laughs> so i was hoping it was going to go that way <laughs> uh, um so so, so so those sort of things actually um it worked out really well uh yeah, being sure. able to come through quite easily and um and, and and work through it but you did right like you have to understand people you know you have to understand um the lingo um what make you know people tick over here and um how do you communicate? Um, how do you articulate the the language properly? And all of that, even though, as I said, um, being in one of the last cities that British has left, the English was always there. Sure. But um, being able to, like, you know, get into a proper conversation and um, use it on a daily basis was a bit of a challenge to begin with. But then, you know, you grow and learn, and I've always been a quick learner, so worked out. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not sure what your accent sounds like, but it's very hard to pick. <laughs> um, it, it's yeah. all over the show. You know? and that used to be back in the days my um, my 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 um, icebreaker in the bar. You know, good old bars. You go out there, have yeah, a pint, yeah. and you go. And um, girls are like, "Hmm, where's this accent from?" Like, oh, I guess we'll be playing this game now. Like, <laughs> but yeah, 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 all fun and games. Oh, cool. Okay, mm. so you've. Was that the when you said you worked at the fruit and veg? Was that next to Bunning? Uh, sorry, Harvey Normans and stuff. And yeah, that? mate. Yeah, okay. that's the one. That's yeah, the one. I've been there. I've been yeah. there. I brought some produce. <laughs> oh, very good. Yeah and, yeah, and then from there you went to was it Trust Power? Yes, that's right. Yes. So, um, I mean, I was just getting to a stage where I was like, okay, um, Nathan, you have done this, you have done this, and now um, all the character building jobs are done. Like, now let's get into some proper stuff and start building my career and young me being young and bouncing I was like I'm just going to apply everywhere but um, yeah I, I managed to actually secure a job at Trust Power um, being in the tally sale so it was sure. phone calls cold calls all of that um, and um, Trust Power back in those days was um, in Tamanga 
Ah. The old building, yeah. Yep, yep. So um, we were there and, um, um, yeah, got on, got on the phones and, um, again, there was a new way of learning a skill to um, actually communicate properly over the phone when you're not actually yeah, it's part seeing of one of the hardest you know, the roles you are talking to. Yeah. yeah pick it. I mean, no one likes it. Rejection, right? So, <laughs> hey, welcome to rejection. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so working at Trust Power, like it was, it was really good. I've learned so many things from Trust Power working there. And um, yeah, um, yeah, it was, it was actually really good. And was it a company that put you through quite a lot of training and stuff that, or was it more just on the job training that where you learned your lessons? Mm, it was, it was a bit of a mix of both. Um, like I like when when I'm when I actually like something and I get passionate about it, I really get into it. Yeah. Um, so Trust Power definitely put together a really good training module, and I think they still do it. You know, they they actually train people really well, and I think that's that's one of their um, really good skills. Mm. Um, and um, so I learned how to patch. I learned how to. Um, do role plays and stuff and um, understand different objections, how to come back to it and all of that. But the, on the other side, um, it was me and my uh, good mate, um, Jesse Andre, who back in those days was my team leader. Okay. And um, I used to flat with him. So we'll finish our job and um, we'll go back home and after having tea and stuff, we'll just sit down and break the pitch. Okay. Wow. We'll just break the pitch, and because yeah. um, he was actually really passionate about um, how to um, convert people, how to get yeses from them compared yeah. to just like full on rejection, like don't talk to me and all of that. So um, we used to just break down pitch and just do our role plays, which made me really good on the phone. So yeah, um, not not it didn't take me actually long to be one of the top sellers at Trust Power. Um, and um, uh, people were actually quite shocked to see this guy who came out of nowhere and is not even from this country and um, being one of the top guys in sales. So When you first started out, did you think, you know, a bit of anxiety and stuff? And, Absolutely. man, this, this job's not for me, it's too hard, what have I got myself into? And Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, all of that. Yeah. Um, but, like, I mean... It was it was more like I didn't understood back then how to be vulnerable, yeah. How to actually just you know accept that it's okay, um, mm. and so I had this wall like all the time. Like and um, I used to be quite reactive. Yeah. Um, when people say something, I'll just react to it rather than just going that. No, I understand. Like yes, I am, and. Um, I'm working on it and all of that. So, yeah, it was definitely like that. But, again, it goes back to Jesse and I just sort of like having those yarns every mm -hmm. night. And um, um, I've learned a lot from him. Well, it's um, the whole uh, failing to plan is planning to fail. And you go into a role, repetition, yeah. one step in front of each other, the 1% each day gets you to a place where you become a professional and you're confident in the role and all the rest of it. Yeah. It's like yeah. Every, everyone says, hey, I'm no good at um, private sports of public speaking I'm nervous you know everyone's nervous yeah but if you do it every day of the year for five years at the end of it you won't think anything of it yeah absolutely it's just reps getting the reps in you yeah. don't get a big muscle without going to the gym and picking up that <laughs> weight multiple times a a absolutely yeah. mate and um but I think when you are sort of like young and bouncing it's hard to accept that yeah um like you know I don't know like uh, I think um you have you your brain puts up this wall and mm. go like you know no you you're better than this like you don't have to accept that that you yeah that you the anxiety is kicking in like that person is about to say f off to you on the phone and how would you feel about it and after that and don't take it personally and all of that so i guess those sort of things was actually quite a quite an eye opener yeah, and sure. that actually made me um develop this thick skin where little things don't bother yeah. at all um, and it's more about looking um, on on the abundance of things as to being negative about stuff you know like I've, yeah. I've scarcity mindset versus yeah yeah, yeah. 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 And, that, and you get that in sales right someone will go out do hardly any calls they'll get one deal and they'll pin their whole life on it mm. actually Ryan Surhan just did a post on it a couple of days ago he had a nine million dollar deal that missed out on because COVID happened yep. it was a nine million dollar commission to him right it was like a hundred million dollar deal <laughs> Out of the $9 wow. million dollar wow. commission. Wouldn't that be nice? And, yes. um, it, you know, he's like already pre-spending it in his head. 
but it's not banked until it's in the account. Mm. And if you've only got that one transaction and it falls through, oh, I'm a loser, I'm this, that, I'm, I'm, I'm everything else, versus yep. maybe make a few phone calls, deal with some rejection. You might get 10 listings and you sell five of them, or you're still actually doing really well, yep. rather than just banking everything on the one and thinking you're a loser because it didn't go ahead. A- absolutely, and I think mm. it's um, it's a learning thing. Yeah, You know, like um, you're not born with that mindset and like, I mean there will be minority that will actually have that mindset from the beginning. And those people are like, you know, like hats off to them. I think it, they've got to be brought up pretty exceptionally to have that mindset yeah. from a very young age. <laughs> Absolutely. Tomorrow. I mean, I, it's funny you say that because I, um, I was listening to um, Kirk Vosper when you had him on, um, on the podcast as well. And um, he mentioned about, um, you know, like learning how to play Monopoly and stuff and... Um, and, and how uh, Frank and his mum actually taught him like quite a few life lessons at quite an early age. Yeah, and, sure um, thing, yeah. you know, like things like that, like um, it's phenomenal. But yeah, a- again, I think it's it's as you grow experience um, in whatever you're doing, you learn those things. Mm-hmm. So trust power, like, I mean, I, I really, really um, sort of um, give credit that I worked there. And yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you heard the um, analogy or the we talked about it in the action membership stuff we did um, on a coaching day one day, and they talked about this kid goes to school, does say year eleven, which mm. was fifth form we were at school, mm. does year eleven, gets to the end of the year, all his mates go on to year six or twelve, he does year eleven again, the next year all his mates go into year thirteen, he does year eleven again, then they go to university, he does year eleven again. You wouldn't do it, would you? Like it sounds ridiculous. Yeah, it does. <laughs> but the majority of people in yep. their jobs, and this is no offence to anyone, but a lot of people in their jobs get up every year and they do the same job, and the same job. And they mm-hmm. don't. I don't want to be the manager. I'm happy in this position, and they just do the same role for ten odd years. Yeah. And it's almost like repeating that same year. Yeah. And then they go, I've got ten years of experience. It's like, well, do you have 10 years of real-life experience actually growing a business, in, you know, or do you just have 10 years of repeating the same year? Yeah. And unfortunately, people's mindset, they just get in this clockwork. Yeah. A lot of them even have the same holiday every Christmas, mm-hmm. same spot, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That, that personal growth yep. is what leads to, again, yep. having that confidence to pick up the phone, make that, it's what breeds the opportunity. Yeah, mm. yeah, absolutely, mate. And, um, like, I think it, it comes down to change. Yeah. People are scared of the change, yeah. um, and um, and they they get set in their ways, and they're like, oh, "Well, if it's not broken, like, why do we have to change it?" And um, all of that. But I believe that um, you know, like you you break ceilings, you break boundaries if you actually push yourself, yeah. um, learn different things, you know, and um, and try to be better. Yeah. Like you, I'm sure you would have heard, like get like try to be one percent better every day, yeah. and that's been my mindset. Um, from the beginning because coming from India it was like mum and dad said to me that um, like I mean you know when you convert um, rupees to New Zealand dollars like there's a huge difference Um, so they said to me that hey look um, we're putting this money out there for you you got to make this work like there's no coming back and um, that mindset just sort of stuck with me so I'm always trying to lean forward as yeah. to sort of like go like, nah, shit, I can't actually do this. And Let's go on to this opportunity. <laughs> yeah, 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 why not, you mm-hmm. know? Because I'll, I'll be able to set this up for my next generations and stuff. Um, so i got to be the one putting the hard work in, mate, every day. <laughs> yeah. And, and as, as a national, um, you know, point of view, every Indian family I've ever dealt with in business and stuff, you guys do it so well at keeping the wealth in the family and... Kiwis are just tall poppy syndrome. Oh, he's doing well. You know, screw him. We'll cut him down. But <laughs> you're like, you're doing well. That's really great. How can you help me do well? And everyone gets what you know, does well together. And absolutely, it's fantastic to actually watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, I mean, it's funny you mention about the tall poppy syndrome because I like the thought that I have towards that is why don't people ask questions like, well, how did you actually do that? Like, can you help me do that? Mm. Or you know, like how, how I, I really appreciate what you have done. Like, what other ways, do you know? Because yeah. I would love to, honestly. Um, and um, and those are the things I think. Um, if we change or tweak that mindset slightly, yeah. everyone will be thriving. And and all of my mates that are successful are willing to talk about how they got there. 
yeah. that's how I have a podcast. If <laughs> no one wanted to tell me the stories of their life and how they got there, I wouldn't have a podcast. Yeah. And all of these people have come from tough upbringings generally as yeah. well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so it's not like they just got won the lotto. I mean, that would be yeah. great, you know. <laughs> good on good on him, that person who's um, up in Auckland, you know, yeah, um, yeah. recently won. Well, you know, good on him. Um, yeah. But, yeah, so I, I guess um, part of that is um, is being vulnerable as well. Mm. You know, people are scared of being vulnerable and putting their true self out there. Yeah, yeah, well, no one wants to get hurt, yeah. Like, listen, oh, I've had this crush on this girl for 10 years. I'm going to ask her out. Oh, heaven knows. What if she says no? <laughs> she might say yes too. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know, you locked eyes last night? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's yeah, looking yeah. at you for a reason. Yeah. yeah anyway. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's brilliant. So from there you um, decided real estate was the career of choice, was it? Yeah, it was. Um, I mean, one thing I <laughs> I, I, I got at Trust Power was um, like I genuinely like helping people. Yeah. Um, and uh, like every deal that I try to do at Trust Power was um, if I'm switching someone from Spark to Trust Power or Vodafone or whatever, um, it'll be like, okay, well, I can genuinely see that this will help you. And that got picked up uh, like by the managers, by my work colleagues, um, team leaders, all of them. And everyone used to say um, that, hey, man, I think you'll do really well in real estate because you've actually got a like a genuine heart to help people yeah um and i was like oh yeah yeah no no i think that would be good and um dad uh being in the mortgage uh breaking industry back in india like he showed me few sort of um few of his sort of like clients and stuff as well that he was working with and um and got quite good success in that. Um, so, th- like having that sort of mindset, it was like, you know what, I'll give it a go. Um, so <laughs> at Trust Power, um, I used to work with Lucy Beaton, um, which she's she's at Eves now, and her mum Sarah used to manage Eves okay. um, Eves Realty at, at the Lakes. And um, so Lucy just said, like, I think you should go and have a chat to mum. And literally, mate, like it was like, okay, yeah, oh, you know what? Lunch break today, I'm going to go and have a chat. And when they had a chat with Sarah, and Sarah was quite impressed and um, mentioned to me that I think you should clear your papers straight away. Started clearing my papers, and um, I managed to smash out um, papers in three months while working at Trust Power. Yeah. And it was like, okay, bang on. I'm going to burn all the ships and I'm going to dive in. Yeah, and sure. that was it. <laughs> so so Strand Eves was it? Or? Eves, yeah. Okay. Eves yeah. at the lakes. And um it was actually really good. Like um I, I, I appreciate what Eves have done in terms of training and stuff as well. Like yeah. um they had a really good training uh module set up. Um and yeah, they gave me what it what I needed to sort of get it get get up on the on the ladder and um start sort of um listing. So you went out officially on your own, or were you a part of a team when you joined? Nah, them, just or? by myself, mate. Yeah, yep, so straight in the deep end. Yeah, <laughs> literally, I, I've got this rule: like, if I'm getting into something, I'm literally going to burn all the ships. Like, there is no other way. Mm. <laughs> you can't. There's no plan B. Like, you're yeah, just going to yeah, yeah. jump in, make it happen. Yeah. Well, otherwise, you go. Oh yeah, they'll, I'll leave that one to tomorrow because I've got to do this. Or <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm guilty um, to it to some degree of. Yep, I'm working on this business at the moment, but oh, these deals are coming and this is going to put food on the table right now, so I'll work on that stuff and I'll get back to it. Like mm. You do tend to put mm. the immediate income in front of you, mm. um, but then you come back to it. I just work longer days. Yeah, <laughs> well, well, that's, that's yeah. the thing. I guess, like, you know, you've got um, a few ventures going on, so it yeah. makes sense, like, you know, to actually work on some stuff and then work on the other stuff. And Yeah, and to be fair, all of it's me. Or I've got some business partners, but it's all me. Like this, yeah. I'm not working for someone. I'm not trying to yeah. do a job. Like everything yeah. I'm creating is for me and my family yeah. and yeah, yeah, and our partners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Now I I love that um, what you're doing, like trying to create different streams of income because I think that's where, um, that's where you want to be because like if one thing goes down, there's the second thing. If second thing goes down, then there's a the third thing. Yeah. Um, and having that entrepreneurial mindset is. Um, is the way to go. Yeah, the old saying used to be the average millionaire has seven income streams. Now you're essentially you're a millionaire if you own a house almost in NZ. 
because you, you can get <laughs> if you brought one five six years ago, you got almost a million dollars of equity, assuming you didn't go and yep. lend more. Yep. Um, but you know, I suppose now it's multi millionaire. Yes, you can have seven streams of income, and it, and that's like investment portfolios, um, your crypto shares, whatever you want to be, KiwiSaver. They're all income streams. Your rental portfolio, absolutely, and you might have some businesses and side hobbies and other stuff as well that pay you. But yeah, crypto crashes, the shares might be okay. Your housing's going the opposite way because yeah. that's completely irrelevant. Yeah, you know, it will wash out yeah. over a long period of time. Yeah, yeah, um, no, absolutely. And I think, I mean, these days with technology, there's so many different streams as well. Like, you know, you can set up your Amazon shop. Like, you can um, start selling something on social media. Like, there's so many ways to actually make money. Yeah. Um, it, it all just comes down to that person's, um, uh, I guess, passion and willingness to make it work and willingness to learn like yeah. you can't go out and start a drop shipping business if you're not going to learn marketing absolutely because if you can't sell the ads no one's going to see your product you're not going to sell anything absolutely so yeah you can yeah. have the worst pro- yep. grant cardone saying is um best known beats best mm. you know you could be the number one doctor in the world and you can save anyone's life you might have cured cancer but if no one knows about you they can't come to you yeah but you could be this mediocre doctor that's got an awesome marketing team behind you it breaks in tens of millions of dollars of income a year because everyone's heard of them. Absolutely, yeah. mate. Absolutely. I mean, it, it goes anywhere and everywhere, eh? Like, I mean, you know, you go to beautiful restaurants and stuff as well. The If the presentation of the food has been done right, yeah. you'll go, oh, my God, like, that was tasty, even though, like, like next door at a Turkish shop, like, you know, that what? kebab t- tastes way better than that food, but... You know, just the yeah, just the, just the presentation look, and the marketing. A kebab doesn't look the same on Instagram <laughs> as a nice plate of <laughs> you know, yep, yep. power dish or something. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess there's some marketing behind yeah, that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so you that's obviously come into your your career quite a lot, the marketing and marketing yourself and your social yeah. currency, as I'd call it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, marketing has always been my my thing. Like I. I've been creative that way from the beginning. Um, And when I say beginning, like even in school as well, um, um, we used to do these um, creative fairs where you, you, you like paint some, like few paintings and stuff and you try to sell them and all of that. So yeah, I used to be right into that sort of stuff. Um, um, That, that was my creative side of actually drawing and painting and all of that. And then it led to um, science fairs where I've like done like creative models of um, volcanoes and stuff and few other um, models and just trying to sort of like sell them to people. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, and when I say sell them, like literally selling them to my teammates and um, teachers and stuff, so that Where I it all starts. <laughs> so, so I actually get the get the, get yeah. the rankings. So, yeah. um, so you've ticked off product manufacturer, marketing, <laughs> and sales. There you go. You've got a business. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, so, so that's how it all started. But um, I, um, I studied sort of like what are the success points in real estate, and also understood like what's actually going on in Taranga real estate market mm. and uh, I mean look I've been in business what four years five months now um, and um, back in that time when I first started um, it was Bryn Baston yeah everywhere yep um, and and look, again hats off to that guy like Brent is phenomenal at what he does and um, I actually I was working at Trust Power when I met him a couple of times at um, Folk Cafe at Hans um, and it was it was good to actually have a conversation with him and um, and and also seeing the social proof that was there yeah. um, so it was it was easy to sort of understand that as long as you have got good social um, platforms and you're actually putting out legitimate content people will mm. see um, and I, I truly believe that social media is the best way to spread your name because you're actually yeah. getting way more than what you're actually spending mm. um, and then of course being able to measure it as well who clicked and yep. demographics and all of that so um, yeah th- that that actually I learned that very quickly so from the beginning it was like okay well um, this is Brent's thing like what's Nathan's thing like you know yeah it's got to be authentic to you yeah you got to ask that question you know like okay what would you bring to the table like who are you and like I had a chat a bit uh, about this to my wife and um 
and my <laughs> Beth has been the my my rock, you know, all the way through. And she said, "Babe, just be you. Mm. Who you are, just be you." And um, and that actually showed um, through my videos and stuff that I did. It was just like just me being me, um, easy going, um, full of energy, full of life, and <laughs> and also selling cool properties. Yeah. And and the other thing you do in real estate, and you do it well, and Brent's always done it well too, is when you see you, he takes the time to come over and say hi, and he could be out with when you could be out with your family or whatever it may be, but you will still come over, say hi, shake a hand on the way through, knowing that full well, potentially we could be a customer, or alternat- alternatively, just being a good person. Yeah. But you do need to be mindful of what you portray yourself on the social media is actually what you present in real life because people are watching you when you Absolutely. put yourself out there. Absolutely. Absolutely, and I think it's one of those transparent industries that if you are someone um, that you actually not um, yeah, it comes and, out real and quick. in real life, <laughs> it will come out. Yeah. You know, um, whether that is through reviews, whether that is through you know the transactions that you have done in the past, and all of that. So, yeah, and and that's what I thought is like I might not impress everyone, yeah, but I'll have my own niche. Yeah, you don't need to impress everyone, but there's also, as we know, there's over 600 real estate agents um, with registered licences in the Bay of Plenty, and I can probably name 40. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's people that stand out. A- absolutely. And, and man, do I go some, to some open homes. Like, we, we live and breathe property. It's our biggest passion as well. And yeah. And I've walked through a lot of open homes, and I couldn't tell you who was, yeah, whose home it was. Yeah. There's a lot of people still that I remember or that are sitting in front of me right now for good reason. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely, mate. And and I think um, those sort of, um, I, I guess, learnings, no one actually teaches you. You have to pick it up yourself. Um, yeah. And it's 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 one of, like, I believe real estate is sort of like one of those games that you are a lone wolf. Um, yeah, sure. And you just got to find your own path and, and work through it. Yeah, you might, you might make some mistakes and... Um, as long as you learn through those mistakes, um, you're fine. But I found that um, also that um, having some good sounding boards yeah. so surround yourself with, you know, people that you can actually bounce ideas with and, 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 and hear their opinion and also um, don't have that um, ego to go, look, I can't actually take your constructive criticism, <laughs> you know, like yeah, yeah. take it on the chin and learn from it. Yeah. 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 Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Couldn't agree yeah. more. Yeah, yeah. So what, I guess we've talked about, are there any other tools you think make you a good real estate agent? It's just being authentic? Or? <laughs> oh, mate, you're getting the Nathan Gill package. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, look, it, it's... Um, it, He's it, about to list my house and even know it's for sale. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's a mixture of a lot of things, but um, uh, I mean, I can give you the whole rundown. I think it's it's not just me being genuine, authentic, but also um, like the marketing style and... Um, and my my um, involvement throughout the whole transaction, mm. like I really like to hold my client's hand all the way through, um, right to the very end, and then after that as well, like keep that communication going with them. And um, punctuality must be huge, you know. If you say I'm going to call you by two o'clock, make sure you call them by two o'clock because there's a lot of emotion in real estate, right? Is, is, has a buyer come back with a counter offer? What's happened? Or are, are we going to get the house? Or a- absolutely, mate. And um, that I learned um, at Trust Power, yeah, because it was like you know you, you're just dealing with people on the phone. So if they're like, okay, well, give me a call at two o'clock, and you might have an answer, mm-hmm. you better <laughs> you give them a call, otherwise you'll lose that sale. And yeah. I followed that through at and real estate as well, which sometimes does get slightly tricky because um, you're trying to get hold of the other party, and you know they're yeah, not. Yeah. Coming. But as long as everyone involved is aware of where things are at, mm-hmm. um, you know. Yeah, that's that's absolutely fine. And you know, I've been caught out for it too before. You know, oh, what a cushy job you've got! You just swivel around in your chair, or you go out for lunches every day. You guys live the dream, but people actually forget that sometimes people are going through a divorce, and maybe they don't want to sell the house. And you've, I'm sure you've had a few uh, situations like that that the customers aren't that easy to deal with, and you have got to represent them. Yeah, absolutely, mate. And I mean, you, we pretty much <laughs> deal with. Um, Similar sort of situation um, in some way, shape, or form on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, but it's just one of those things that it, it just comes with the package. Yeah. Um, and you just gotta you just gotta take it on the chin and just go. You know what? Like it's the good, bad, the ugly, all in one. Mm. Just do it. You know. And I think having a positive mindset really helps me with this because yeah. I never let 
anyone else's energy affect my energy. Yeah. Um, there are times, of course, when you when you let someone in, and then you go like, "Oh, why did I let that in? Like, my energy has been affected." But yeah. um, a majority of the times, I try to just sort of like deflect that sort of energy and try to find solutions. Like, how, what can I do from my side to help that person out or help their situation out? And and it actually has helped quite a bit because uh, I can give you this much that I haven't burned one single bridge yep. from the beginning yeah, till nice. now. Yeah. Um, like, I can literally knock on any of my clients' door and have a glass of wine with them. Like, And that's been the most satisfying thing. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Mm. And obviously you've, you've come into the market on what would be deemed as one of the hottest markets New Zealand's seen, especially over the past two years. And we've seen a real flatten off towards the middle of last year. So what what's tell us about the industry then. What's happening in the marketplace? What has happened and where, where do you think mm. it, it may be headed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an interesting question because... Um, like there, there, there's so many answers to it and um, you know you can actually literally put it on google and you'll hear from tony alexander about his predictions and yep. then you'll hear from some other economists about their predictions and all of that so um in my opinion it's not all doom and gloom at all sure people have gotten used to um selling their properties quick and fast getting the absolute top dollar during that COVID market we had and the rise we had as well. Um, and that's been there for quite a while now, you know. Um, people haven't seen the down market, so um, it's an instant shock as well. Yeah, so um, ripping the Band-Aid off, yep. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, I mean, let's not forget the fact that, um, you know, OCR going up will definitely affect people. Like, people have budgeted their monthly income on say 2.5 and now all of a sudden they're faced with 7.5 of course that will affect you know and um and have their challenges to it but market in the uh, with the right location right property right buyer right vendor expectation still working yeah we've been the most um Mm -hmm. busy in the last sort of like since the beginning of jan than we were in at the end of last year like October, November, like the last quarter was like, okay, um, this is sort of like a bit of a bumpy ride. But since January has hit, like things are happening back again. So it's it's almost like, you know, um, people have taken their time to get used to it. And now they're like, okay, well, this is the reality. We've got to either make it work or w- whether we're just going to hold tight and just hunker down here. So mm. people who have decided that, okay, let's make it work, they are making it work, and people who have like, you know what, let's wait for a couple of years and then make a move, they're doing their thing. Yeah, it's an interesting one too because we've talked about it a few times where they say, you know, right on the peak, I think there's roughly a bit over 400 listings in the Bay of Plenty or Tarang areas. Mm-hmm. Um, we're back up towards 1,200, I believe, now. But when houses are selling in 30 days and now they're taking 90 days to sell, over that three-month period, it's still 1,200 homes. Absolutely. So just by that concentration alone, it looks like there's more houses for sale, mm-hmm. but they're just taking a little bit longer to drop off. That, that's exactly the point. And, you know, that, that works with a lot of different things, like what's the vendor's um, circumstances are like, you know, we, 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 what sort of... Um, I guess the expectations are as well and um, how quickly they actually want to make a move. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it, it involves a lot of things. But you did right on in that in, in, in saying that because um, if you compare to last year's December to last uh, to, to this year's December, um, last year um, houses sold were 221. Yep. This year was 188. So if you look at it... There, 40 homes, yeah. You know, you, there, there isn't a much difference. Yeah. Mm. Um, like median days to sell a house at the moment is sitting around sort of like 85. Yeah. So, you know, like it's it's not a major difference, but it just, um, you know, like, yeah, it just comes down to vendors' expectations, price, and um, what they're willing to take. Yeah, and prices, uh, we talked about this the other day in private, but the price is driven by affordability based off new interest rates, right? Absolutely. Uh, um, for, the, for the listeners, I did a calculation on a $2 million lend, on a house they're expecting 2.8 just purely for the numbers and I think I looked at somewhere in the threes I forget but it was sub four four at the highest it was eight thousand dollars a month to service two million over 30 years at seven percent that jumps to twelve thousand over the same period of time so that's five grand cash flow 
Absolutely. different. So that wipes out a lot of buyers. That's someone else's second wage. Absolutely. And if you own four homes as an investment, you have to put up 20 grand a mm. year to actually manage that, you know. So, um, yeah, so I guess um, there's, there's, there's that as well. But um, in this market, uh, as an agent, like I am focusing on being smart. And when I say smart, um, picking the right listings in right location. Working with the right clients, yeah, um, and and getting getting rid of, I guess, um, the stock that is just literally taking um, taking the hit, and the vendors are not willing to accept that lower offer. Yeah, yeah. There's no point wasting energy time into it if um, if things are not working out for parties. You know, it's better I let them go. So that's where I'm actually attacking this market and. I think for a lot of agents out there, it will be in a way learning a totally different market and understanding mm. from a vendor's point of view. But you know, like um, as long as you're proactive, as long as you're still doing your prospecting, um, doing your basics well, um, yep. you will you will survive and you will be actually um, successful because there's real opportunity here to take market share and. Um, and being the agent out there who's actually doing the mahi, doing the work and helping people. Yeah, it's about that sales funnel. You've got to tip enough in the top to get it out the bottom. And I talk about the profit to paying ratio. If you've got a customer whose expectations are $2 million and the house is 1.2 all day long and you can't get eye to eye on it, you're better off not having the listing. <laughs> exactly. Because you're going to waste a whole lot of time in open homes and all the rest of it. Just go, hey, mate, wrong energies. In the words of Marty Fox, wrong energies. Why don't you go and um, yep. find that right agent for you that thinks that's the price? Absolutely. And those are the real estate agents you're going to see falling out of the market because they're very hungry and they haven't done the research and they don't know the market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, you did right. Um, talking about energies, um, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a really good topic because I'm right into that. I love, um, like I truly believe the in the energy, sure. and um, it, we are all energy beings. Like I mean, if you look at it, like every human being is. Um, that's the way, the reason we up and running and all of that is because of the energy inside us. Yeah, um, we're just all atoms, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah. Um, and um, I, um, I recharge myself pretty much every day um, by hitting the gym and um, and and um, having those positive affirmations and stuff. Yeah. Um, and when you actually um, meeting a client or or um, or person or anyone that, that you're talking to, if they don't have the right energy, you've got to be really protective to sort of not that their energy affect your energy because it ruins the whole day. So um, you, you're dead right in that case. Sometimes you just got to say, you know what, like I'm actually not the guy for you. Yeah, I did a post a long time ago now about your vibe attracts your tribe. You know, what you put yep. out there is what you get back. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, the whole energy thing and the affirmation thing, that's how Nick Fennell, who came on the podcast from Nothing But Everything, yeah. found me. He saw that post and he's like, I've got to meet this guy. Yeah. And he's just made me my my video that gets me energised in the morning, which I'll show you because you'll appreciate it mm. um, after this. And, you know, now I've got this video that's got my goals in it for the year that I watch and it's got my favourite quotes and it's so powerful. That's awesome. It's like man. sitting there and writing it down, but I can see it, visualise it with my favourite songs in the background, photos of my family. Yeah. And I watch it I'm like, Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Even today I came in and I had a heap of emails, messages to go through and I, I did all that and I was like, I need to get yeah. started and work and I just cleared it all, watched my three minute video and I was like, right. That's it. I'm on this one now. Bang, straight into it. I love it. And you know, it just, it gets you going. Yeah, yeah, it certainly does. Um, uh, talking about Nick, uh, I'm, I'm good friends with Nick as well and um, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> love his skills on and, and, and the videos and um, what he's working on at the moment about like, um, you know, uh, uh, your energy and how to actually nav navigate and direct that energy in the right way. Yeah, the um, thought looping. Yeah, cause it thought looping, and and it's you know his perception on stuff is yeah, I'm good at it. Driving yeah. along and someone cuts me off or one that really winds me up is they're doing the same speed as someone else in the overtaking lane. Like stay left and less overtaking, but I'll just do the same speed and we'll both be under the speed limit and we'll hold up all traffic. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> that winds me up, but it doesn't yeah. need to wind me up. Yeah. Um, and, you know, let's zoom out. Okay, well, maybe that person's um, trying to overtake and yeah. this car's accelerator's jammed and he's going as fast as he can and the other, you know, yeah. What yeah. It, just however you want to look at it. Yeah. Or they're, they're rushing to get to the hospital because their wife's pregnant and mm. she's 
you know, whatever it might be, you, you put a little funny spin on it and you go, yeah. oh, yeah, they're, yeah, they're in more of a rush to me or let them go. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That oh, whole mate. mindset <laughs> thing. A- absolutely. And um, the traffic one is is definitely funny because um, sometimes, you know, like you do go through that and you go, like, why would you do that? Like, yeah, they were yeah, so yeah. close. Like, there's no... Um, there's no point doing it, but um, <laughs> but yeah, people do it, you know, like, yeah. and that's their thing. Um, I tend to sort of like um, put on my favorite song um, and just like crank it and just like forget about that moment, you know. Mm. Um, but everyone have got their own ways of deflecting that energy. Yeah, the good one for me is just listening to a podcast like Common Unity. Oh, just sit it. there and get not get get a bit of knowledge as yeah. you're driving along. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I'm in no rush anyway because we've got 10 minutes left in this podcast and I'm only two minutes out. So <laughs> I'm going to have to sit in the car park anyway. Why <laughs> do you talk about that podcast, mate? Because um, that's my go to when I'm actually um, in the gym biking. Like yep. Just You just put that on and then, yeah. Free your mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Take yeah. your mind away. That and Audible, like books. Yeah. And yep. just do a trip. Now you can go to Auckland and back and almost knock out a book with a yeah. bit of town driving. Yeah, yeah, Six yeah. Six hour book, short book, but yeah. Absolutely. Talking about books, mate, um, I read um, recently a, a, a book called uh, Fanatic Prospecting. Okay. Very interesting book. Yeah. Um, I mean, um, it was it was just talking about how fanatic you have to be um, to, to, to get the prospecting out there for you to be able to um, get the most out of whatever you're doing. Yeah. It doesn't have to be real estate. It could be anything that you're doing, but you literally like your yeah, fanatic prospect. And this guy was saying that um, finish your dinner, and then um, if you have got half an hour between um, seven thirty and um, eight o'clock or whatever time you want to clock off, just make twenty phone calls. Yeah, like he, the the I guess the summary of the whole book and what he was trying to get to you was any spare time you get. If you're passionate about growing your business, just put it to it. Yeah, and look, that's <laughs> what my wife decimates me in. She's the fastest growing consultant that Generate Kiwi Service ever had as far as funds under management. Yep. And she's got a, another guy that's chasing her up right now. He's doing very well and pretty comparable numbers. Yep. But she just had basically a month off work. She got home yesterday and she was straight on the phone. Yep. She hadn't even unpacked her stuff. She said, I'm just going to do some confirmation calls for the week. And then we walked the dog this morning because I hadn't seen her for a week. She'd been away with her mum. Yeah. Walked the dog before I came into the office and she's like, I've got to be on the phone by nine. I said, well, what's happening at nine? Well, I've got people to call. And she only had three three yeah. appointments today. Yeah. Which are an hour each. Yeah. But nine o'clock, she was on the phone. On the phone. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of similar to her, mate, in terms of actually – like, you know, nine o'clock, um, I'm on the phones in yeah. the morning and then I have um, evening slot from four to six, six thirty on the phones. And I, I love it, like I genuinely enjoy it and I think it comes down to my background in trust power. Yeah. Of just convers like having having good conversations with people. Um the, the um they talk about, you know, if you're a little bit quiet or something in your business, go and shake the tree, see what falls out of it. Mm. Like a classic example for in her business is thinkers. You go and see someone and go, oh, I want to think about it. Should I give you a call back in a week? Yeah, okay. And you can see it in their business's CRMs, the amount of people that like have hundreds of thinkers. Yep. And she'll have like eight. Yeah. Because she'll she'll call them. Follow up. Follow yep. them up. If they want, it's a redial or put it back or, you know, yeah. you, you just deal with it and yep. keep going. Yeah. And the amount of time, she's like, oh, I've only had 10 appointments this week, but she's still done 25 Kiwi service because she rang her thinkers and... Fifteen dropped in or something. Got him across the line. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And 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 that again just comes down to uh, uh, being being proactive. Mm. You know, like if you actually want to grow, you just got to put the mahi in. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I love it. It's awesome. Yeah. So, is there any other insights or anything you think we should cover off? Um, look, uh, the other insights, I guess, um, just to be mindful of is um, is uh, before making a decision to go on the market or. Um, or, or actually buying anywhere, um, my one suggestion would be to actually have a really good think about your bottom dollar sure. and also have a really good think about what you can do from a seller's point of view um, to, 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 to the house, to the property, to actually maximise your, your, your profit levels, you know. Um, 
that that's one thing that I mean I really help and guide my clients through it. I actually uh, created um, a, a PDF version of um, sort of like a, a, a you know what what it takes to actually sell your house successfully. Yeah, and and that includes like um, breakdown of every room but also breakdown of the outside as well, your gardens, your street appeal and all of that. Um, and, and, and if you do all those things right, buyers see it. Yeah. Presentation is everything, you know, like there are three pillars of a successful campaign, which is your uh, presentation, which makes the marketing right. So the second one is marketing and then the last is negotiation. Mm. Um, so if you do the right presentation, which shows in our marketing, Yep. And if you do the right marketing, that will show up in the negotiation because the buyer has already bought your house in, in their heart. So it's just a matter of working yeah, through Yeah, the finer them. details. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. And there's a reason stage and it's like the new norm, right? It is, it is, yeah. isn't it? Let's take down the family of your uh, yeah, beautiful auntie and we'll take that one down and we'll put up this photo of a peacock. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Take the personalization out of the house yeah. so someone else can see them there. Yeah. And finally, um, Anna's mum's house gets Airbnb. Yep. And we've had probably 40 people through it. Mm. It goes well, but it is her home. Mm. And that she's actually with us at the moment because she's had people in it over Christmas. And they had someone come through. Yep. And they said, This is not a professional Airbnb. We cannot stay in this house. And we're yeah. like, Did you see the photos? <laughs> like, it's her home. So, yes, there's photos of family up. And we're like, Yeah, you're, you're in a home. Yes. But, you know, yeah. when on a sales side of it or selling your home yeah. people still can get caught up on that stuff of not being able to see them in the home because it feels too much too much like you right a- a- absolutely it does and i think it, it creates that emotion of like oh okay well yeah look look they've actually lived here like they look at their family and this and that um and that actually takes them back to their home you know with whether if it's been staged in a way that um it's completely neutral. It's just the staging and the artwork and the furniture. It's done to the style of the home, and you're running a theme. Yeah, it just generates that attraction. And ensuring away. a room doesn't look too bare or too cluttered, and exactly. Yeah. It's funny you you say about staging because I I, I thought uh, about um, starting a staging business. Yeah. Um, but you know, like um, I would um, I become a father of twins last year. So mm. um, the beautiful kids are nine months old. So <laughs> the okay. focus is on them. Makes a lot of sense as a side hustle though. If you've got 20 listings and you've got 20 houses worth of furniture that you can rent out. Yeah. It's a great second income. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've, I've, uh, as I said, I've, I've thought about it. So maybe, maybe one day. Yeah. Yeah. We're not cutting this out. Sorry. If you were trying to keep that to yourself <laughs> and make sure no other agents do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. do we want to touch on house values? Because we understand that the market's come down and I know you're saying Tony Alexander and stuff, mm-hmm. but are you seeing, do you feel that the market's kind of flattened as far as values or it's too early to tell? Or I mean, no doubt the house values have gone down. Like, yeah. you know, it's um, it, they're just um, the harsh reality of this market. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, at the same time, um, there are pockets of um, Tauranga and the Bay as well where... Um, some listings and houses are still holding their value. Yeah, sure. I'll give you a prime example, like Matua, for example. Um, houses in Matua and parts of Otomodai, um are still selling for really good values. Yep. Um, and simply because all the schools are there, mm. um, houses have been built right, um, uh, Ferguson Park, yeah, I up Matua. There, I get it. All of that, you know. Yeah. So uh, th- there are pockets of Taranga that are holding their values, but then, you know, uh, the biggest shock to me was Mount. Yeah, that seems to have fo- softened a lot, eh? Yeah. Which tells you possibly it was overhyped. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was. And, um, and you know, like all of a sudden people have realised that you don't actually have to pay through the roof to secure a house at the Mount. And... Mm. Um, um, buyers are dictating the market, so we are willing to pay X amount, and that's what we're going to do. So people have started yep. to realise that quite a bit. So yes, the the the, mar- the the values have definitely gone down compared to what people were achieving during COVID times. But that's not to say that um, you know it's all sort of doom and gloom. Um, yeah. It will be a bumpy ride, um, I believe personally um, this year. Um, but, but at the same time, it's not a bumpy ride in which that you actually are going to lose money and lose your house value and all of that. 
It's more of like understanding the market and go, you know what, maybe it's time to, yeah, buy and sell in the same market or mm. let's hold off and, and yeah. wait for the market to come around. Well, look, most people that are in the cryptocurrency are still okay with Bitcoin at 20,000, even though it hit 40 odd. <laughs> they, they all believe it's still going to see 100,000. Yeah. So you're only lost in your house if you brought it in the last two years. If you brought it four years ago, you still gained equity. Absolutely. So, yeah, we've seen that one of the quickest spikes in property ever seen and yeah softened yeah yeah it's just a market cycle yeah you know it it happens and um as long as you can survive this like i still truly believe that real estate is the best investment yeah 100 percent. you can touch it add value to it all the rest of it someone else can pay for it absolutely the other thing i feel is um house values can't really drop past replacement cost Mm -hmm. if it now costs you a million dollars by section put a house on it it's kind of the baseline for a four bedroom house with two bathrooms yeah to a certain degree, yeah. Especially if you're in the city and and the only land available is out in a Mokoro or something like that. Like exactly. You can't get cheaper than replacement value, and inflation is going up roughly ten percent, seven percent, want to call mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Therefore, the values need to keep climbing. So we've almost softened back down to a replacement value, but I still think over the next two years you're going to see some inflation in property. Yeah, yeah, it will be, and you did right. Like, I mean, look, there, there is no more land available, you know, and close by. Um, mm-hmm. The furthest you go is, you know, the Tipuki, Pap East, or Ohiaidi, um, Adler, yeah. um, and um, and parts of um, lakes as well. Yeah. But, you know, like, they're, they're still holding their value, and um, people are there who are willing to pay the value to actually secure that land and mm-hmm. build that house. Yeah. So, um, it, it, like, but of course that, that means that it has slowed down. Um, but yeah, majority of the houses or market that have taken a huge hit are your, you know, like your, your first time buyer and the investor market. That's yep. the market that have actually taken the biggest hit. Okay. I believe. That bottom end. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I thought a lot of it would be the higher stuff and that's catch 22 because a lot of people can afford that high end stuff. Yeah. Um, but like I said, the $2 million mortgage type thing, that writes a lot of people out that would buy that property. And I have seen a number of those. You know, We've been looking at lifestyle properties for a long time and they're yeah. all $3 million and we just can't get there. But those yeah. properties are now back at two. Yeah. Although I might pay the same amount to service a debt, mm. still buying it right when the interest rates drop away and, yeah. and so forth. So Yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. you see it more because um, in the lower end because uh, interest rates really affect... Um, the buyers there as well. Yeah. Um, whether as compared to the higher end stuff, like I mean, majority of the people who can actually afford that higher end, like yes, they they, they give interest levels a bit of a mm. like okay, yeah, let's give them notice, but it's, it doesn't affect them as much. Yeah, uh, and and also what you're talking about as far as presentation and stuff, the only houses I want to buy this year are the ones that look like they need to be built. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, I. You know, I don't want to take advantage of someone, mm. but if they're in a position and the money's right and I can make sense of it, that'll be the home that I buy. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's opportunities everywhere, you yeah. know, in every market. Um, so I guess, again, it comes down to you got to look at the brighter side. That's where those numbers get very skewed too. If you look at an average, I'd say, of a house that's got an RV of 400 and people are buying them at 250, Yep. which people think's unheard of, but mm-hmm. I can tell you it's probably happening out there more than you think. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, there's... Absolutely. That'll really skew those numbers in that market. Yeah, and, and again, it comes down to your vendor um, 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 situation. Yeah. You know, like why why they have listed, what they want to do, and where they want to invest. Yeah, if I said it, uh, if you wanted to sell homes and, and the market to be in that second, third home owner, like we've had their first house, we're taking our step into the slightly newer, slightly larger family home. Mm-hmm. You know, it used to be that, 700 to a million it's probably been more like that 900 to 1.2 or something in, yep. in the last sort of years but that's that hot market that's two working parents yep. um, they, they want to be in a certain area they can afford a nice home and, and that's the, the homes that churn quite a lot yeah, yeah. my opinion yeah yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely and um, there's been an average that um, that if like majority of the people switch their homes in three years time you know um, and and that again comes down to a fact that like okay well kids have grown up now they need different schooling or we we want our kids to go on a certain school well let's switch locations so that 
you know, we are eligible to actually get there. Got out with the neighbours. Um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, that could be part of it as well. But, I, um, yeah. I, I, it's funny because where we live in the lakes, we were the first house on our street, and this is the longest I've ever lived in a home, which is six years. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. But because we designed the floor plan and stuff, we're quite happy in it. And we've yep. locked a lot of homes, but we just, you know, in the last previous few years, everything we liked went to auction. We were always subject to selling our home. Yeah. So we're like, oh, no, don't sell it. We'd pay a bit more than that, but uh, gone. Okay. Yeah, what it yeah, is. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so maybe this will be the market that we accidentally do something that we've decided we're not going to. Yeah, but, um, yeah, yeah that it's, it's been interesting watching our street, and we're like, oh, that one's been up. Oh, mm. oh, they're selling already. And then, mm. yeah, you're right. That's sort of about three years. Is multiple houses in our street getting sold, and we were the first ones up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's interesting. Funny to watch. Well, mate, you know, if you ever decide to sell, you know where to go. Um, I do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Use my license to sell it myself. Or <laughs> um, yeah. it, it's funny you say that because I now uh, my brain just clicked that um, I remember also meeting you at number two Orange Lane in Bethlehem. Orange, orange. I'm trying to think which one's Orange Lane. Off Moffat. Um, there was the um, big family home. Um, and um, we had the conversation about um, your property. Okay. Yeah. It'll come to me. Yeah, I'm it just will. Just trying to yeah. think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's been awesome. Is there, well, anything else? You, you're pretty happy with what you covered off? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mate. I, I mean, think it's look, been um, a good chat. We've learned a bit about you and what's happening in the market and, and your role. Yeah, 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 absolutely, mate. I mean, no, it, I mean, it's been a pleasure um, talking to you um, on this podcast, and I'm grateful that um, you invited me to to, yep. yeah, to share my story um, yes. to the, for the listeners, and um, yeah, just just learn a bit 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 more about Nathan. Um, but like you know, my details out there. If anyone wants to touch base, they can give me a call and um, have a yarn, and we can talk about all sorts of stuff. So yeah, we'll have your details below. That any links mm. you want to share. Um, sadly, Gabs couldn't be here. He's had um, something come up, but yep. there's always a question that he he normally spears up, and it's the you know what would you what would be some advice you give your younger self? Probably younger self. You're in India, maybe potentially coming to NZ, and the whole world yep. was pretty scary. Yeah. Now, yeah. that, now that you are where you are, have you got some advice you'd give that younger version of yourself? Mm, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't have to uh, be that far back. It could yeah. be once you're here or... Yeah, yeah, no. Um, <clears throat> look, I've, I've actually thought about this um, um, previously as well, um, you know, as you go through life and um, you know, you're like, okay, what could I have done differently um, if, if, I, if I sort of like, if I had my time again and um, it will be embrace everything everything and anything that comes in your way the good bad the ugly like um whatever like negative emotions positive emotions um people's thoughts um um anything and everything that is coming your way just embrace it yeah. because ultimately you are who you are and you are the master of your own destiny yeah yeah and top. Um, you know yeah. Yeah, diamonds are forged under pressure. You're never going to get anywhere if you're afraid of having a hard conversation. And exactly, yeah. exactly. And you know, if when you have that attitude, like you will actually notice that majority of the conversations are actually very positive, and mm. people are lovely out there. And um, you know, you, you, like I mean, it, again, it comes down to what you put out there is what comes back to you, kind of thing. So, yeah, yeah that would be one thing that I will take it from all the way um, till now. Um, and um, yeah. That'll be it. That's perfect. All right, we'll leave it there. Thanks for awesome. joining us. And uh, Nathan Gill's details are below. He's selling his house. Make sure you interview him. Awesome. Okay, hey, thanks, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me, mate. Okay, cheers. cheers.